Okay, hi everyone. Um, my name is Jeroen Koren. Um, uh, I, I, there's a lot to go through, so I'll, I'll, I'll give a, an, introduction, an introduction of myself in the, my talk tomorrow. Um, uh, it's interesting that I'm um, talking after Ad or Odd, who, uh, who talked about making um, things easier, the interface easier for users. This is this one. In this talk, I'm focusing on making life easier for administrators. Um, so I'll just do a brief history of what I'm talking about. In 2006, Semantic Media Wiki was introduced. Uh, at that point, if you wanted to have a data structure, you needed to create templates, properties, categories, and query pages if you wanted to display all of that information. Uh, so life was good. You just had four page, types of pages. Uh, the next year, page forms was introduced. At that point, it was called semantic forms. Um, and so that added one more page type forms. So now you had five. Uh, then a, later in that year, semantic drill down was introduced, for those who have heard of it. Uh, at that point, you needed filters as well to create a data structure. Uh, and then in 2009, uh, it was still called semantic forms. Uh, page forms got this page special run query so that if you wanted to use that, you also had to create query forms, which is really just another kind of form, but it's uh, you can, uh, sort of a separate part, part of the uh, data structure. And this was really, this was the, the, the height of complexity uh, with uh, seven different page types. Uh, then in, in 2014, um, uh, so the semantic drill down, the filters went away, now filters were defined in categories. Filter pages went away. So you're back down to six. And then Cargo came about in 2015. So for people who are using Semantic Media Wiki, it was the same thing, but, uh, but with Cargo, um, it, there's no properties and you don't really need categories, although it might be a good idea to have anyway. Um, so anyway, so you, you know, four to six page types, even um, you, you know, uh, no matter what, which uh, of those options you're using, uh, that's complex and it's redundant. There's a lot of duplication of field names and so forth. So the question is, can we eliminate some or all of this redundancy? Um, this is something a lot of people have looked into, and I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people here have uh, looked into this. Um, uh, the, the usual solution is to create a data model, which is defining that whole structure in one place, and then you generate everything from that, templates, forms, et cetera. And then if you want to make changes, you make changes to your data model, and then regenerate everything. Um, so there's a few different approaches to that. One is to define the structure on the, right on the wiki, uh, that's what the page schemas extension does. I think it's the only one that does it this way. Um, and that's a little, that's, that's what the interface looks like where it's, you're, you're filling out this big f form of forms or you know, uh, meta form or something where you're defining all this stuff uh, and then it generates uh, forms and templates and stuff from that. Um, the second approach is to define the structure somewhere outside the wiki uh, and generate pages from that. There's there's one, one called Mobo that is uh, it's proprietary. Uh, there's a European consulting company that uses that uses it. I, uh, I just mention it because they've talked about it at uh, previous uh, events in SMWCon. Um, uh, I, I think this is the most popular approach. Although, as far as I know, all the solutions remain. Uh, remain proprietary, local to that one organization, unreleased. Just, just out of curiosity, who has at their organization something like this? Anyone? Oh, okay, all right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, you have something like this. Yeah, we, we do structures out of what we do it in UML. Okay, great. Well, that'll be. And, and that means you can use the simplest, like Visio, the UML plugin for Visio. Sure. And you have something too yeah, at, at NATO. We're working on it, and I hope to use a uh, use a uh, what is it lightning speech to show a little bit what we have going on. Great. Um, 
Then finally, the third approach is one that, as far as I know, is only used at MITRE, but it's quite interesting, uh, which is you define the, the structure in some sort of database. Um, and then have pages that query the structure. So you're not really regenerating anything because the templates and forms are just little stubs. Uh, in MITRE's case, they use uh, Scribunto slash Lua to add, if you don't know what that is, it's fine. I mean, the basic idea is um, uh, you don't actually have all these uh, separate components on the, the wiki. They're, they're just pulling in the data from one place. Uh, which is really neat, but uh, I, 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 for some reason, I, I don't think that many people are using that approach. Um, so one weakness of all these approaches is that even in the best case, they're adding more complexity. It's there. There's, in, you know, in addition now to forms, templates, etc., you also have this other thing uh, that you have to deal and maintain with. Um, uh, and it can be hard for users to figure out where to go or what to do if they want to change something because it's really it's not obvious, um, uh, you know, looking at the wiki what's what's going on, where th what the where the structure is actually defined. Um, so this is just one thing I, I want to talk about, which is uh, using the cargo extension specifically. Uh, it may be possible to truly simplify creation of the data structure down to just one thing, which is templates, and let the template define everything, and and uh, and you, you let everything learn from that, or, uh, you know, read from that, and and, and uh, get defined. So, uh, just just briefly, I don't actually explain Cargo here. It's an it's a it's an open source media wiki extension that's uh, similar in uh, in 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 its goals to Semantic Media Wiki, uh, but the key thing here is. Um, Within cargo, all of a class is defined in a call to cargo declare, which is a parser function within a template. Uh, so can we base everything around that? So here's, here's an example, a very simple cargo declare call. So you want to have a, a, a pages about people. So in a template called person, you would say the name of this database table is people. And then here are the three fields uh, that, that I'm using. Um, and their types, and the last one is a list, uh, which is that's something that uh, the the cargo has that the SMW doesn't. Um, uh, there, you just need to use array map to to split up a list. Um, and then, yeah. So I mean, so before we get into cargo, what about Semantic Media Wiki? I, I think most people here use Semantic Media Wiki. It could be done in Semantic Media Wiki too. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, part of why I called it Cargo Declare is because there is something in Semantic Media Wiki called Declare. I'm saying I think no one uses it. Uh, is that, does anyone here use it? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, I'll talk to you later. Um, often or uh, you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I didn't think so. Um, I want, yeah, if you go to semanticmediawiki.org, I actually wasn't sure that it, that it still yeah, existed. Search, use the search engine to find it, right? It's because the, the, the parser functions are not aggregated together. Oh, I see. Yeah, if you do a search within the wiki, that wiki, yeah. semantic-mediawiki.org. Um, uh, yeah, so, so what declare does is instead of a, a lot of set calls, you say at the beginning, this template field gets set with this property, and this other template field gets set with this property, and so forth. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, I mean, you could do basically the same thing if you do a ray map. You could do it basically yeah. clear. It's, it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not that sophisticated. Uh, uh, but it... It too could, in theory, it's uh, it's you know the 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 right mechanism to support additional statements about each field and property, because you already have a parser function there. Uh, will it happen in semantic media wiki? I don't know. No idea. Not my, not my uh, jurisdiction. Um, so uh, okay. So back to cargo. Um, uh, and I, I don't really have time to show examples of any of these, but um, filtering in cargo is all automated already, meaning uh, unlike with semantic media, we, you don't need to define filters. It just looks at all the 
uh, fields you have in their types and, and sets the drill down interface accordingly. Uh, so for instance, date fields will get um, you know, drilled down based on year first and then month, et cetera. And sorry if this is not making any sense, but uh, the basic idea is that, that that's the uh, easier part is, uh, is filtering. Um, now forms is interesting. Forms is interesting, sure. Um, can you generate forms automatically based on only on the defined data structure, uh, meaning have form editing without form definitions? Um, this could already be done. There's really no reason why it's not implemented already, or no good reason. Um, especially if you just have the simplest kind of form, which is you just have one template at the top of your page. Uh, you already know all the fields in that template, so why not just have the code automatically generate a form to edit the page? Um, so the, the basic idea is if there's no form specified for some page and, you know, and that page calls a template and you know that the template called declares a cargo table, because in, in this case I'm talking about cargo, then you just create an on-the-fly form uh, using those fields. Um, Tied in with that, there's already, um, there's already quite a lot uh, that forms do uh, read from templates. And this is true for both Cargo and Semantic Media Wiki. I mean, the input type, uh, it, it tries to be smart about it and set the right input type based on the type of the property in, with SMW or field with Cargo. Um, same thing with allowed values for both SMW and Cargo that already um, that already happens. For, for cargo, there's also the concept of hierarchy, which uh, I'll get to. Uh, very new uh, features in cargo and page forms is now you can set that a field is mandatory within cargo, not, uh, and you don't have to do it within the form. Um, so, and then, uh, so that uh, within the form, you just say, this is the field, and put the input, input for it right here. If it's specified already as mandatory, then it'll be made mandatory in the form, too. Uh, and the same is true for unique, if you want something to be a unique value, and regex, which is less, less important. But that's for stuff like phone numbers and so forth. Um, for mandatory, it's interesting. And I wish that I had some images, because this is a, large, a lot to process. But um, it's interesting because um, if you just set a field as mandatory in a form, then if somebody goes and edits the page directly and edits the template call directly, it won't be mandatory for them. I mean, they can just set it to whatever they want. But if you do it within the data structure, within the data storage, in this case in Cargo, then you can have Cargo itself uh, throw up an error or something if you try to save, or save a value, that, a blank value to that field. So it's sort of a, a more foolproof way of, uh, of uh, defining. And the same is true for unique and regex. Um, this maybe illustrates it a little better. If you have something like this in a cargo declare call, if you have some, some field for color that can only be red, red, blue, or yellow for some reason, and you set it to be mandatory, um, uh, then in the form, automatically, you'll have a drop-down input that is mandatory. You, don't, you, you just need to specify put the field color, and it'll take care of the rest. Um, and then additionally, if you go to ed edit the page without the form, it'll still be mandatory. Uh, and it'll have to be one of those values. Um, actually, I'm not sure if it'll have to be one of those values, but it will be mandatory from Cargo's perspective. So there, that's a few things. There, most things can't yet be set uh, within Cargo that you can set within a form definition. Um, these are sort of in, uh, in uh, decreasing order of importance. Uh, the, the, the big two are, which is, are tied in are having more than one template in a form and having uh, one or more of those templates be multiple instance templates, if you know about those. That's a way to define a whole table of data within one page. Um, so I, I would get to all of those, but uh, there's just there's not enough time to. Oh, actually, no, I am getting to the, to, to multiple instance templates. Okay, so um, so let's say let's take a specific example. Once again, we're talking about a, a 
page is about people, and there's a form called person, and it's going to have, uh, you want each page about people to have not just information about them, but about all the jobs they've had. Uh, and jobs aren't something you can really fit into that person template because it's sort of a table of data. It's not just a list of texts, of strings, it's, it's more than that. Um, so you need a multiple instance template for that. Can we define that within Cargo Declare? And hopefully this will make more sense as, I, as we go through this. Um, so what I suggest, what I'm thinking uh, could work is have something called child tables, a new parameter to Cargo Declare where you specify for this main table, this, the, the jobs table is one child's table and you can have more than one. Uh, and there's a reason why you'd want embed in field in there too, but it's not that important. Um, and then, interestingly, you can use that not just in forms, but also in filtering and queries. Um, but uh, yeah, so the way this would work in forms, I'm not even sure if I have a slide to explain how it works in forms. The basic idea is you don't have a form for people. The code goes to try to create a form automatically. It sees that this person table has a child table called jobs, so it, it says, OK, I'll go ahead and create a multiple instance template for the job template, because I know that the job template corresponds to the jobs table. It's very confusing. Um, but in drill down, that could work in that, um, in that you, it would let you drill down not, based on not just uh, the fields of the, 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 the table called people, but also additionally uh, on, on job-related fields, um, which is quite useful. I mean, that's something that people ask, have asked about a lot in semantic drill down is how do I do filtering based on the data from more than one table, uh, you know, combine uh, tables together, or more than one category, I guess, in the case of semantic drill down. Um, and then this is more minor, but, but uh, for queries, and here's an example of a query for cargo. It's the parser function called car cargo query. The second line, the one in red, uh, could be made optional if, uh, if the child table relationship is defined, but that's really not a big deal. But, uh, it just sort of, it, it just sort of um, a way to indicate that this is a holistic approach that sees all of these things as related. Uh, data storage, data entry, querying, and drill down. Usually when people talk about data structure, they're just talking about data storage. Uh, but what I'm saying is there should be a way to, you know, to get some synergy and, uh, uh, you know, if, if you define things the right way to be able to really uh, create all of these interfaces from that, from that one structure. So interesting, we're talking, speaking of UML, uh, this, this ties into uh, UML. I mean, um, the, maybe the old holy grail or maybe the current holy grail for, for some people with all, with all of this data structure stuff in MediaWiki uh, is to define all your classes in UML file, because that's the usual way that people stru uh, you know, define structured data. And then from that, generate templates and forms. And we have an example of, of uh, someone who's doing that uh, here. Um, so uh, just briefly, if you don't know about U UML, it stands for Unified Modeling Language. And if you ever see a, a little a chart like this, that's UML, or that's the graphical representation of UML. I'm not even sure if UML is, if it has to be visual, or if, if this defines a UML file or something. I don't know. It's just, just the graphical representation. OK, OK. So OK, OK. Um, yeah, so, so a, an image like this, would w that's an example of UML. Um, I think this can't work because UML is just not good enough. Um, basically, it's a wrapper around SQL or around the, the tables within a, within a database, within an SQL-based database. Um, and m m it really is a, a very closely, closely wraps around that meaning if you can't do it in a, in a database table, then you can't do it in a, you can't structure it in a UML class, I think. Uh, so let me give an example of something that can't be done in UML. Um, hierarchies. Uh, this is, uh, there's, as far as I know, there's, there's two, or 
in, in my way of, uh, of, of looking at it, there's two kinds of hierarchies, uh, single field and multi field. Single field, an example of that would be genre for a movie or a book or something where you have just the, 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 the genre can, can have any level of granularity. You can say this is a drama film or this is a historical drama film, which is a subset of that, or biblical drama, which is a subset of that. Uh, so it's going to be every one of these nodes will, will be our, our possible value for the genre field uh, versus a multi-field hierarchy, which an example of that is, is continent, country, and city. Uh, that's a pretty typical one, lo location-based stuff where uh, you'll ha you have different fields in the table for these different things, but each one can only be, uh, uh, you know, a sub not, a, not really a subset, but a, uh, a child or whatever of that, of, of, uh, of the field above it. Um, so, yeah, so there's two kinds. I, I don't think UML can represent either one per se. I mean, you can obviously, uh, well, not obviously, you can define all the tables that are needed to represent a hierarchy field and make it make something complex, but you, you should be able to, and you can't just say, this is a field, this field genre in, this, in the table called movies uh, holds a hierarchy of values, and here's the, here's the full list of 50 values that it can hold, yes? In media, in media wiki. And in UML, it's exactly the same. So you can define, okay. This yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You can define, you can move anything in UML. Yeah. 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 They ever say that you come from a different world and they don't have any other concepts? Because I don't think that's a voice universal holding languages. No, it's unified. I at least, okay, I feel better. I corrected one person at least. Um, uh, okay, well, I'm both embarrassed and uh, excited to, uh, to hear that. Uh, that's weird. Okay, I should have asked someone when I was doing my research because I looked into all this stuff and I couldn't find anything for that. Uh, okay, that'll be, that's good to know. Well, okay, well, there goes. Uh, no, Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, people are interested in UML and how it maps to semantic Yeah. Okay. Well, it doesn't really detract from my main point, which is simplifying things, but that actually is very good to know. Uh, so, okay, well. Yeah, yeah to, to, to kind of back up your point, Yaron, I know a little bit about UML, and I think one of the big problems with UML is that nobody, there's not enough people that know UML. Well, that's a good it's a very, yeah, it's well, a very here's, specialized domain. Yeah, I mean, I read through a whole UML cheat sheet, and there wasn't anything, <coughs> or a few of them, actually, and there wasn't anything that looked like, like that category or oh, yeah, enclosure or whatever it was. If a semantic web came up, if I may humbly suggest, your, your problem here with UML is the same one you have with is the same one you had with the declare statement. You didn't talk to anyone about this. I mean, if, if Ike was using declare, it seems like he would have been a good person to talk to. Maybe talk to people. <laughs> no man is an island. Okay. Um, so, uh, okay, so here is how um, hierarchy support is done uh, within page forms, cargo, and semantic media week at the moment. Um, there is, uh, there's the, the, again, there's the concept of single field and uh, multi-field hierarchies and they're, they're, they have to be implemented in two different ways. Um, um, single field hierarchies are supported as of pr pretty recently, uh, maybe six months ago 
in page forms and cargo, they are sort of uh, supported in Semantic Media Wiki via categories. I mean, you can, you can create a whole tree of categories, and then if you query for something in, in the, the main tree, it will also find anything in the, in the or the, 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 the top level node, it'll also find anything in any of its subcategories. So if you're using categories, then you can do that with Semantic Media Wiki. Sub-properties. Yeah, okay, that's not, uh, that's, yeah, it's, okay. Um, well, we're, I, okay, the, that's, yeah, I don't know if we'll have time to, to go over that, but it, but it would be interesting to talk about that too. Um, Multi-field hierarchy is the thing with like, with, you know, country, city, or uh, whatever else, country, state, city. Um, it's sort of supported in page forms with uh, show on select and values dependent on. Uh, those are two different ways of doing, depending on exactly how your data is structure, structured. It's not yet supported in Cargo or Semantic Media Wiki. Uh, but it certainly is something that I, w that I, I would like to see added to uh, Cargo Declare in the Cargo extension. Um, Finally, uh, this is not really something I'm, I, I am getting into detail about, but it could be that the creation of templates itself is simplifiable too. Uh, maybe Cargo declares all you need within a template and you don't even need for the template to, to uh, you know, display a whole, it's standard big uh, chunk of wiki text that, that actually does all the displaying. Um, uh, so in a sense, the template could query itself, I guess, and find out what, it, what all the fields are and how they should all be displayed. Um, and that would really, that I think is really something that could, uh, that could, uh, would be the, uh, the, the apex of this whole thing is really just having a single declaration of a, of a, a table within a template and, um, um, and then basing everything around that. Um, somebody else mentioned the Google Summer of Code. Actually, there's a there's a, a planned Google Summer of Code for the project for this summer that I'll hopefully be uh, co-mentoring uh, to improve uh, the special drill down page in Cargo, which is going to cover uh, some of these things. Um, that should will start this summer hopefully. Um, has anyone tried to make a comprehensive? Well, I guess that you've answered the question. I guess UML is. It, I really, what? Sorry, yeah, no, go ahead. Sure. Okay, no, I'm, I'm very curious to hear what you think about this one, actually. Um, well, we've had some discussion, I think, with uh, Peter. Um, the, the, it's, it's relative. Yeah, it's, I, I'm, I'm going to add a slide to my presentation tomorrow just to show an ontology done in UML. Um, but it's, 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 it's relatively simple. It's pretty much aligned with semantic web. So right. some, there are some subtle differences on inheritance. Inheritance doesn't work the same way in semantic web. Um, but uh, as, as an editing function to give you a roadmap before you start, it's, it's excellent. It's, and, it, and it's f effectively free in Visio. UML? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Hi. Um, so just one, um, I guess, a clarification and a comment. So um, thank you for what you said about MITRE, but you sort of gave us a little bit, or my previous life, a little bit too much credit. Um, we weren't doing anything quite that fa fancy. However, um, Toby Otterer gave a talk about using Scribanto last year at EMWCon, and he was doing some amazing things. Um, right. That really helped. We we definitely do things, but it's a little bit more manual than you. Yeah. Okay. I I, I would aspire to do it as well as you described it. You had you had it though in at least one. Yeah. Wiki oh no. We, I, and I use a lot of Scribanto. Yeah. That's absolutely true. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. but it was in its infancy, and at yeah. some point I'd like to explore more of the things that Toby was talking about last year. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um. <clears throat> well, that's my talk. Yeah. If anybody has any more questions or comments, 
Anything or corrections? Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, I was just wondering uh, if you would uh, be asked to suggest uh, an extension semantic with the wiki versus cargo, which one of these two extensions would you suggest? I think it's moderator, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm the person to ask. I, I would, I, I would, what? Yeah, I've given various talks on on this kind of thing. I think I think cargo is uh, is preferable. I'll I'm I have a talk tomorrow where I'm 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 going over it in just very briefly. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you.